Pierce Morgan with CNN. Thank you very much for giving us the time to talk to Texas GOP vote today. And you've been here in Texas now for a couple days, traveling around the state. Yeah. And, and um, I've heard you talking on the radio and a few other places. And has anybody changed your mind on anything? No, but it's very interesting to come to a place where clearly there's a gun culture in a good way, in the sense that many uh, Texans, I think, have grown up around guns and hunt with them and shoot with them for sport. And I get all that. And you know, I had a guy tell me how he gets in a helicopter with night goggles and goes hog hunting. Well, I don't even, we don't have hogs in Britain. We have something, the tiny pigs by comparison. So it's a very different place to come. And I found it very uh, useful, I think, to debate the issue with Texans, particularly law-abiding gun owners here, about where they're prepared to compromise with what the president's trying to do in relation to curbing gun violence. Now, I spent three years living in your country back in the late 70s and early 80s, and they have a completely different view of guns over yep. there, obviously, and, and even a different attitude about self-defense. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a store owner that got robbed, and he defended himself with a club and mm -hmm. ended up going to jail for assaulting the yep. guy, basically. So it is a totally different mindset. One thing I heard you say earlier today on the radio was the difference between Chicago and New York. Mm -hmm. In, in Chicago, they have some of the toughest gun control laws in the country, but in New York, they've actually managed to reduce gun mm -hmm. violence by enforcing the laws against criminals. Why is that not a better way to, to move forward? Well, I think, it is, I think it is a good way. I think lots of ways that you can tackle this. I'm not just saying that you know, the, the assault weapons ban that I'd like to see is just part of the puzzle. And I think it's a very specific thing to stop the mass shootings by deranged young people who have easy access to AR-15s and military-style rifles, in my opinion. Um, but you've got to invest more in mental health. Uh, I think there's a lot of mentally ill people in America that need to be spotted and red flagged earlier so that they can be treated before they may or may not do something awful, um, given there's so many guns that are available. I think you've got to have the background checks made universal. I think it's just a no-brainer to me. The idea you can go to a gun show in Texas and do a personal trade with somebody and nobody has any idea who has just bought that weapon, I think is crazy. Private citizen to private citizen. I think it's crazy. You know, sorry, but if you, you can't do that with a car, you know. You don't have to do a background check on a car. You have to insure it. Right. And you have to register it. You have, people have to know who's driving a car unless you want to break the law. So people happily do that in Texas. Why would they object really to having any kind of database that says who's buying and owning guns in America? I mean, to me, it's a, it's a crazy situation that you have 40% of all gun trades appear to be done completely anonymously. But look, there are debates about how that can work. Um, to me, though, the two most important things are limiting the magazine size. I don't see having fired a few 30-round magazines with You're a, making a lot of noise back there, well, you? Well, <laughs> you know, to me, it just felt terrifying, I'll be honest with you. It's the power of it, the speed, the velocity that you could unleash these bullets. I don't know why anybody really needs a 30-bullet magazine, let alone a 100-bullet one. And the only real answer I've had here is twofold. One is to hunt hogs, and that, to me, isn't a good enough reason when you consider that other people are using it to hunt down school children and kill them. So if it's like for like and you've got to make a choice, maybe the hog hunting, you use something else. Um, but it's a contentious issue in Texas. But I think these are things that need to be debated. Um, so that and the assault weapons, to me, should also be part of the, the, the overall equation that you're trying to do to reduce the violence. As the Attorney General Abbott said to you earlier, the, um, you know, trying to make criminals follow laws is creating more laws against law-abiding citizens basically just takes more and more rights away from the individual law-abiding citizen and it does very little, if anything, to actually deter the future crime. Well, there was nearly a 7% reduction in crimes involving assault weapons in the last assault weapon. It's not bad. I mean, it's better than a 7% increase. If it saves one life, why wouldn't you at least consider it? And this thing about the rights of a citizen, the rights of a child, as one of the Sandy Hook fathers said, should supersede any other rights. I'm sorry, but as a parent of four kids, I believe that. You know, I am protected by your constitution, I'm a legal resident here, and it's a magnificent document. But there's a reason there were so many amendments. And to me, you could, I think, look at the Second Amendment, and the problem is that you, me, three other people here, could all interpret the wording of that amendment differently. That's not a very well-worded amendment, when it's so ambiguous. And I think that's part of the problem. I think the Founding Fathers gave us a lot of flexibility so that we could work through the issues without having to change the Constitution. Well, the important thing is to do it like we're doing it, right. with sensible dialogue. Right. You know, lots of people earlier getting upset and they're out there protesting. Stuff. That's <laughs> fine. I don't mind that. But it doesn't really help. 
right. I think the extremities on both sides, the, the rhetoric that's used, has to all calm down. And you've got to work out sensible compromises mm -hmm. and then see if they work. But in the end, we all want the same thing. No American wants to have more Americans killed by guns. Yeah. Or anything else. Or anything else, or any kind of gun fight. 100,000 Americans get hit by gunfire every year. To me, it's way too many. So how do you bring it down? Well, fortunately, you know, in this country, the First Amendment and the Second Amendment are very much intertwined. Absolutely right. We get to have a very healthy debate about the issue, and uh, hopefully we'll come to the right conclusion. Safety is certainly a, a paramount issue, and we need to take care of that. What do you think about the state of mental health treatment in this country and that's impact? Most of these shootings. I think it's very. Somebody. I think it's very poor. I think, like uh, in many countries, including Britain, I think not nearly enough has been done into researching this, mm -hmm. providing help to those who may need it, red flagging to young, disturbed people who may be having big problems, and then they get obsessed with violent video games and the imagery and all the rest of it. But, but Britain has the same violent video games, same violent Hollywood movies, same mental health issues. We have 30 to 50 gun murders a year. America has 12,000. So mm -hmm. I'm doing the math here, and it doesn't work in the sense that that must be what the problem is. The gun rights lobbyists would have me believe it's all about mental health. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of crazy people do crazy things with guns. A lot of very sane people, criminals, do bad things with guns. Mm -hmm. And they're not mentally ill, they're criminals. They've got to be dealt with too. Well, the debate will certainly go on, and I know you've got a tight time schedule here. Thank you very much for talking to the Texas GOP vote. Thanks. And I uh, hope we can get together again sometime. And by the way, great guy to bail you out if you ever need a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.